Hey everybody, it's Jim Bonacci from Alliance RV. I'm the Director of Customer Experience here, and we're here in a Valor today to talk about Solar Plus packages, how they operate and what to expect, and if you have any particular questions or concerns while operating them, we hopefully we can address them ahead of time here. To begin with, first of all, you're gonna have two separate panels involved with the 120 side of your Solar Plus package. You will also have a 12 volt panel, which contains the fuses. They're gonna be oriented in different ways depending on the floor plans of the coaches, but they're all gonna have these components. When plugged into shore power, your power is gonna come in through the shore power inlet and it's gonna to come to the main breaker panel. It's gonna be labeled power control center. The easy way to identify this is the fact that it has a twin pole 50 amp breaker right here. Just like any other RV that you've probably had, there's no difference here. But from here, it will leave, the power will leave on one circuit, go through the inverter, and then come back to this other sub panel, also known as a load shed device. This is what differentiates the Solar Plus package from other basic packages offered by other manufacturers. Continuing on here at the main breaker panel that we're all familiar with, anything that's on here is going to be powered when you're on shore power or generator power only. These circuits will not be powered when you're inverting and off grid. Only the circuits contained within the Intellitronics panel or the load shed device will be powered by your inverter when you're operating off of your batteries off grid. Anything on this panel you can expect to operate. And you'll, there is a specific order that these circuits are in and that we'll get to that in a little bit here. But this is what you should be expecting to operate when we're off grid. And if there's any breakers popped here, it will affect both when you are onshore power and offshore power. So it's a good idea if you're having questions, if you're having power problems, if you've got a, some circuits that are down, some outlets that are down, go through and double check your breakers on each of these panels because they may very well be tripped. In addition to that, I touched on this earlier, there is a 12 volt fuse panel below here that will operate your 12 volt stuff in your coach, your lights, your furnace, your, your water heater, all your various other things in the coach that run on 12 volt. And again, that's gonna be the same regardless of if you're plugged into shore power or not. Coming back to the load shed device that I touched on, the purpose of this device is to allow you to utilize more circuits on your coach while inverting power from your batteries. This will allow you to power the vast majority of the outlets and, and appliances in this coach without running the risk of overdrawing your inverter. So we are able to shed loads, thus the name, in a specific order in order to maintain a maximum draw on that inverter. And there is an order that they shed in and it can be user changed, but there is some confusion as to how this works and what, what to expect from it. It is also important to understand that the load shed device will indeed be operational and function as designed, both when inverting off of grid as well as when you're plugged into shore power or running off your generator. So you will shed even when you're plugged into shore power. And that causes some confusion at times, but it is operating normally and as designed. There's another piece to this load shed device that is the control panel, which is in this particular coach is located over here. One of the common questions we get or perceived concerns is a situation where, hey, my I put my microwave on and my TV turns off, or I can't run my fireplace and my microwave at the same time. And it's, people are not understanding that it's actually performing exactly as it's intended to. It's shedding the load so it stays under a certain amount of draw in order to maintain the ability to invert and it won't error out the inverter. So the fact that if you come along, you've got your fire, electric fireplace on and you come and run your microwave, it will turn off your fireplace to allow the microwave to work and then it will restore power to your fireplace circuit after it's done. The one unusual exception to this, and it's not really an exception, it's a little more of an addendum, is that the air conditioners on these coaches, the first thing that's gonna shed in your coach is the air conditioner, which is the central air conditioner and it is powered through the inverter. So yes, you can run one air conditioner while inverting and off grid but that is gonna be the first thing to shed. That is a very large draw. So as your air conditioner is on and you run your microwave, it's going to turn off your air conditioner, just like it did the fireplace, but 
as soon as the microwave is done, it will not restart the air conditioner immediately. It will wait for a total of four minutes of downtime or off time before starting it up again. And that's to allow the compressor in the air conditioner to decompress so it can start up within the capabilities of the inverter again. The second part of the load shed device is the display and control panel. In this particular Kosha 42V13, it's contained here on the side of the cabinet, but it's gonna vary depending on the floor plan, as I said earlier. This is a device that allows you to see different pieces of information in regards to your, the electrical system running through that load shed device. It has six circuits on there and you're gonna be able to see individual draws of each circuit. If you wanna see how much your microwave is drawing, you can see how much your microwave is drawing your fireplace. You can see how it's being loaded up and how it's being shed. You can change your shed order if that's something that you want to do. This really allows you, the end user, to kind of geek out and learn a lot about what's going on in the load shed device and your power usage. Because the more you know about your power usage, the better you can monitor your off-grid performance and your longevity of your, of your charge. With this information, you can also understand if you have a problem. This will allow you to see if something's drawing too high, too low. If it's, something's never coming on at all, it will help you in the diagnosis of an issue if you ever have, happen to have one. Also in this particular area is we have our battery monitor. This is a battery monitor made by Renogy and it's connected directly to the three batteries in the front of the coach that we'll get to later. It's connected via a Cat5 cable. It's a communication wire. So this is able to read the voltage and the state of charge of all three batteries up there. So there's actually a lot of great information here that is you know, available to you, again, the user, in conjunction with the load shed device, you can kind of really monitor what's going on with your state of charge, with your power usage. You may be not even aware at some of the high draw items that you are, might be using. And between these two things, it can help highlight them. Let me touch on that just for a very brief second. A lot of people aren't aware of what a high draw item is. Some things that they're not thinking about being a very high power consumption device, coffee makers, hot pots, uh, hot plates, curling irons, hair dryers, plug-in electric heaters, even if they're small, still take a lot of power. All those types of devices take a huge amount of power and you can see it on this. And you're like, wow, I had no idea my Keurig took 1500 watts. Oh my goodness, that's half of the inverter's capability right there in that one item. So that can contribute to shedding of the loads and maybe you don't understand why that's happening, but this will allow you to monitor that look into that and, and hopefully understand it better. One of the common questions and concerns we receive phone calls on is a person who's coming in and looking at their battery monitor while plugged into shore power and seeing that their state of charge of the batteries is actually dropping. They feel like the coach is not charging. What's wrong? It should be charging. I'm plugged into shore power. It should always stay full. Previously, in other coaches, that was the case. In more modern situations, we use a dual-stage converter, which is actually better for the health of the lithium iron phosphate batteries because it allows them to cycle and allows them to stay at a state of charge where they're happier, where they have a longer life. So while the solar controller and, and the converter can all boost your power up to 14, 14 and a half volts, while plugged into shore power, it will allow that state of charge to drop to 13 and a half, and that's not a problem. That's a, that is the converter allowing the state of charge to rest at 13, which is very, very, very close to a full state of charge, but is not maxing out the batteries and is better for the long-term health. Another situation is that during the day, you will see this thing staying at 14.1 to 14.5 while you're exposed to solar electricity or PV power coming from the panels. That's because the solar controller does allow 14.1 to 14.5 charge level and it maintains that. But at night, now we take away the sun and now the converter is taken over and keeping it at 13.5. So you might see it drop to 13.5 at night and raise up to 14.1 to 14.5 during the day. That's the coach working correctly as designed. It's not really a concern, but we definitely do get that question frequently. So now we're gonna to move to the front of the coach and take a look at some of the mechanicals involved with the Solar Plus package. This is the behind the scenes stuff that allows the system to actually work. 
Starting here, we have our three battery bank, which is standard across all the Solar Plus coaches with Paradigm and Valor just being oriented slightly differently, but nevertheless having the same components. We have them hooked up in parallel. And uh, as I touched on inside, we have a battery monitor and you can see here we have the cable hopping between the three batteries. This is how that battery monitor reads information from these batteries. We also have the battery disconnect up here at, as you're familiar with, with other coaches similar function it will still allow the solar system to charge the batteries if while in storage if that disconnect is off and that's something that's important here when you put your coach in storage turn your inverter off we'll get to that in a little bit turn off your battery disconnect turn off your refrigerator let the sun keep those batteries happy it'll do so and it won't be drawing down in the process one of the problems and concerns that we get calls on frequently is, in the winter months especially, is I don't have any 12 volt in my coach. Nothing's operating. It should be. I have solar. I have it plugged in. What's happening in these situations is the batteries probably have dropped below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The internal temperature of those batteries have dropped below that. If that's the case, then you're going to get a situation where the batteries cannot accept the charge. So even if you're plugged in, or if you're underneath sunlight and your batteries are underneath that temperature, they will not be able to accept the charge because it's unsafe for the operation of the batteries. They can be discharged down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can use your battery power below 32, but you just can't charge. A situation like that, you would definitely need to get your batteries up to temperature above 32 degrees so that they can start accepting a charge again. Another feature of the lithium iron phosphate batteries from Renogy is the ability to turn them on and off or put them into shelf mode for storage. So if you're going to put it in a storage facility for an extended period of time where there's going to be no sunlight available, you can turn these batteries off so that it is unable to have any parasitic draw whatsoever. And when you come back in a month or two or three, those batteries should be healthy and happy and ready to operate. And that's simply done by this blue switch a dongle, if you will, that plugs into one of the ports of the batteries. You take that switch and you put it on each battery and turn it off. Very, very simple. There's instructions involved with that uh, from Renogy. Other situations that we may run into is, is, are blown fuses. People ask about blown fuses frequently. There are primarily there are two fuses up here on a Solar Plus coach. There is a 300 amp fuse that runs the inverter charger. There's also a 60 amp fuse that the power from the solar controller passes through on its way to the battery. If for some reason you don't feel like you're getting solar charge to your batteries, and again, your batteries are above temperature, then I would check that 60 amp fuse. If you feel like the inverter is not getting power, it's not turning on, even though you know you've got good 12 volt power, check that 300 amp fuse. Another big thing that we run into is a situation where battery terminals, other connections may have loosened up over travel. As these things bounce down the road, Obviously, there's vibration involved, and you can get fasteners loosening up. You can get crimp connections loosening up. It's just great practice in general for any RV owner to check your electrical connections in your, in your bay here. Check your battery cables. You shouldn't be able to spin them. They shouldn't. If you give them a tug, they shouldn't pull out. They should be good, strong connections. Any sort of a loose connection, whether it be from a fastener or from a crimp, creates a high resistance situation and will not allow good power to flow through. So you're going to get diminished performance. And in some cases, you won't get any performance out of a situation. It'll be dead, even though it's just simply a loose connection. So continuing up front on a Solar Plus coach, in the upper compartment on the Valor, we have the inverter charger. This is a 3000 watt Renogy product. It is both a charger and an inverter built into one unit. It does have a cooling fan you may hear running in the background, and that's normal. That will cycle on and off as it needs to. So if you hear it running, whether plugged into shore power or not, it's not necessarily bad. And if it's not running, it's also not necessarily bad. So I just wanted to put that out there right now because we do get questions on that. There's not much that you need to do with this piece of equipment. It's mostly all set, and there's no settings that need to be changed. The dis display screen does have some valid information for you and may help you understand what's going on with your coach at that point in time. In addition to that, it may help you diagnose an issue if, you, if you're experiencing an issue. At the top left corner, we have the voltage in, AC voltage coming in from shore power or generator power. And on the top right, we have the voltage leaving the inverter. And again, when this is plugged into shore power or on generator power, 
Power is simply passing through the inverter and going on into the load shed device that we spoke on inside the coach. It is also, if the batteries are in a state of charge that needs to be charged, it will charge via this back to the batteries at a very nice high rate. So you can really put the power to the batteries quickly when this is charging. This will not charge all the time. It will cycle on and off. And again, that's normal. That's something that you want to have happen. You may get to a situation where you come up front here and you're hearing an audible tone. It's, it's a squealing sound or a beeping sound, and it may say fault, or there may be a flashing light. This is great in order for us to figure out what's going on with the coach. It may be as simple as it needs to be reset, and that's by the power switch, which is tucked behind these two gray seal tight connectors right back here. You'd have to turn it off, wait a few seconds for it to power down, and then you would turn it back on. If the code was to come back or that fault was to return, then that would require a little further diagnosis and looking into the situation. But many times it will take care of the issue. So I'm gonna turn it back on. Another factor of this display screen is it shows you where the power is going. In this particular situation, it says it's bypassing. That's great, that's what we would expect when plugged into shore power. It also shows that it's charging the battery. So you're able to come up here and at a quick glance, see that the inverter charger is actively charging your battery, and that's great. A situation where you may run into, you're plugged into shore power, and you feel like your batteries are being depleted. Maybe you're looking at your battery monitor inside and you're like, hey, my batteries are going down, but I'm plugged in. We already discussed that that could be the dual stage charge or the converter, but it's also worth taking a peek out here. First of all, take a look at ACN. If there's ACN says zero, then it's not getting power for one reason or another. It could be something just as simple as a breaker popped on the pedestal that you're plugged into at the campground. Could be the shore power cord is not fully connected. Could be a surge protector that you might choose to be using. Any of those things could just take a, a brief look at them. We want to make sure that we're seeing AC in power coming into your coach. If that's coming in, then it should and is leaving, then you should be operating normally. Another concern that you may run up against as an owner of this is if you ever had an issue with this particular piece of equipment. If this is for some reason had a fault on it that could not be reset and you're plugged into shore power and you want to continue to be able to use your coach. This needs to be functional for most of your coach to receive 120 power. But if it's down, you won't have 120 power in most of your coach. There's a way to get around this though. You would simply have to remove the connections inside under the small cover, electrical connections, and connect them together. What I mean by that is there's power coming in the AC in and there's power going out, the AC out. Remove them from the inverter and connect them together and that will allow you to bypass the inverter in its entirety and the rest of the coach will function normally as you would expect just without the inverter. But again, that will only come into play as if you're plugged into shore power or generator power. You will have lost the ability to power your coach off of the batteries, but it'll allow you to limp along until we can get this repaired. Another question that we receive a bunch from customers is that, hey, I'm plugged into shore power, I'm running off my generator, do I have to have my inverter on? And this situation is, yes, yeah, you do. This inverter needs to be on in order to allow power to pass through it, even while plugged into shore power or running off of generator power. The only time you should be really turning this off is when you're transporting or storing the unit. That will allow it to not draw power from the batteries at those points in time. So the last piece that we're gonna to touch on in the front area of the Solar Plus coach is gonna be the charge controller. Now, other coaches made by Alliance and other manufacturers do also have charge controllers as well. But this one is specifically from Renogy. It's a 60 amp charge controller. It allows us to harness the power of the three panels that come with this system on the roof for a total of 960 watts worth of charging power. It comes down off the roof, the power comes down off the roof into this charge controller, which reduces it down to a usable voltage for the electrical system of the coach, including the batteries. That's really all this is, is a battery charger. That's all this is. It steps the voltage down from anywhere between 20 and 40 volts coming off the roof to the more usable 14, 14 and a half volts for the batteries. There's not much that you need to do on this controller as well. It just sits there and operates. It operates all the time that there's power supplied to it via the batteries and via sunlight. On the solar controller screen, you're gonna see it divided up into three general areas. We've got a panel with a sun above it, we've got a battery, and we've got a light bulb. 
the panel with the sun above it is just simply telling you that the sunlight is being registered by the panel and is generating PV power. You can see at this point in time, the arrows are moving from the solar panel to the batteries. That's saying it's charging your batteries exactly as you would expect it to be. In this situation, it's also showing that it's going to the light bulb. In our applications, the light bulb means load. And in, in our situation, again, it doesn't mean anything. It's not hooked up. There's no harm in it. It's just it's a feature that we haven't utilized with the solar controller, but it's, it's something that you don't have to change anything on. But nevertheless, it will still say there and it'll say on. One of the things I mentioned is that there's a sun icon above the solar panel. That's indicating, again, that there's suns creating PV power through the panels. Now, at night, no sun, no PV generation, you're going to see a moon symbol replace that sun symbol. But what if you have a moon symbol during the day? That means that it's not registering PV power. It means that the solar controller is not seeing the presence of power coming from the panels. This is something that anybody can look into and it could be a very, very simple situation, but you do need to go to the roof to find out. On the roof where the solar port is, there is either one, two, or three fuses, depending on the coach, but with the Solar Plus coaches, you're gonna see them be three 15 amp fuses. Earlier on in our production, we did have them go through a single 30 amp fuse, and we have since changed that design to be three 15 amp fuses, one for each panel. If those fuses were to be disconnected or blown, then the solar controller would not be receiving power from the panels from the roof. So that's a quick way to see if you're registering PV power coming from the roof. That power comes in through the solar port and then through the orange and black wires here below that are labeled solar. And then you'll see the other two wires are labeled battery. So come, power comes in from the orange and black solar wires, leaves through the red and black to the battery. It's really just that simple. And again, there's really nothing here that you need to change. One question that we do get in regards to the voltage reading under the battery on this particular unit is to say, hey, this number doesn't match the number on my battery monitor. What's real? Well, the fact is the battery monitor has the most accurate representation of the actual state of charge of the batteries. And this should not be used as a measure of state of charge of your batteries, but your battery monitor should be referred to for that information. For additional resources, check us out on our Alliance Facebook group, as well as any other social media platform, search at Alliance RV. Thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon.